Welcome to Bay 9. My name is Rob. This is a Yamaha Yamaha Per QT50. Today, we're going to be changing the rear end bearings. So the first thing you need to do is remove the rear fender. I've already done that, but in order to accomplish that, you'll need to remove this 10 millimeter bolt back here and these two Phillips head screws. Fender pulls out. Then it's onto this 19 millimeter nut right here that holds the rear tire on. When you pull this off, there is a shim in between your wheel and the differential that you want to make sure you don't lose. Since we'll be pulling these bearings out, it can't stay on the axle. Set your tire off to the side. So for the next step, we'll need to remove the brake pads. So I'm going to get you in a little closer so you can see exactly what I'm doing. So the way I like to do these particular pads is to just unseat the, it from the pin and then just roll it forward. There is a spring on the back side that's kind of spring loading it and then they just both kind of pop into place. And here you can see the horseshoe shaped spring goes in the hole there. We'll set those aside for reassembly. Now for the next step, we need to remove the uh, rear brake cable. It's easily accomplished by moving the arm. Put these back in place for later so we don't lose them. that down the way. Next we're going to remove the rear fender mount. That's this bolt right here. That's going to be a 10 millimeter. bolt back in so we don't lose her. Set the fender stay off to the side. So next we need to uh, remove the shock mounting bolt. That's going to be a 12 millimeter. And then there is three bolts that hold the rear differential onto the, the uh, drive shaft. Those are also going to be 12 millimeters. And we're going to try not to tip the bike over. There's a square drive that mates up with the drive shaft here, which also has a square drive that mates up with the transmission of end of, end of things up in there. All right, now that we've got the rear differential off the bike, it's time to get the cover off of the rear diff. This is accomplished by removing these three screws, one, two, three, with a number three Phillips. These are not number two sized Phillips drive screws. Okay, we got the three screws off. 
cover lifts right away and then the pinion comes out or the ring gear comes out of the pinion or away from the pinion gear just by pressing the axle shaft out set that off to the side of course i just serviced this rear end so we got lots of fresh grease in here yay all right so you can see we've got one bearing right here that needs to be removed we've got another bearing right here that needs to be removed and then as I said, there's one right behind this special inside drive nut thing right there, and then another one on the other end of the pinion. So I think I'm gonna go for the wheel bearings first. So it'll be these two screws. Coming right out of there. Easy as cake. There is a spacer in between those that you don't want to lose. So, Ugh. whoops. It's louder. Enter. Now, as you can see, the outer bearing has got a rubber seal on it, just on one side, whereas the inner bearing was open. Now, the replacement bearings that I bought are completely sealed on both sides, all the way through the drivetrain. Now, that just means you won't be able to put additional grease in there, but they should be uh, greased for life when you receive them anyways. So the outer and the inner are both 6202 sized bearings. The OEM one is a 6202RS on the outside seal. The RS designates the uh, rubber seal. Both, as I just said, both new bearings are rubber sealed. So these are both 6202RSs. So it doesn't matter which of these goes where. First thing I'm going to do is get all this old grease and dirt. Out of the bearing well. Now when you're putting replacement bearings in, you always want to be nice to the next guy who's going to be in there and place them in with the number facing out. So, there's our outside, or rather our inside. <laughs> Just going to clean that bearing well the best I can now the outer race should not be spinning just the inner race so you really don't want grease in here with an open bearing it's gonna kind of go there anyways now that we're replacing it with sealed bearings I feel that you're fine to just get it all out and then before you put that bearing in make sure you get the axle spacer Again, I'm going to wipe all the old grease off of that. And just to keep that lined up well, I'm going to go ahead and put the ring gear back in, drop the spacer on. And again, we want to put this bearing on with the numbers facing out. And she slides right into place. All right. Make sure I didn't lose too much of my new grease. Bearing just came right out with it. I think we're 
good to go there. So we will put our cover back on. All right, now to do our next two bearings, it's gonna be a little bit more difficult. We need a specialty tool in order to get this uh, special inside nut out. Now what I use is basically a spark plug wrench. It just happens to fit right inside there. Uh, if you look at the bearing kits on eBay, there's some that are sold with this tool. So if you do need one of these, you can get it relatively cheap for this end. If you happen to be trying to replace the bearings on the other end that's inside the transmission, there's a nut that's very similar to this on the other side of the drive shaft, which is for some reason a different size hex than this hex is. So this tool will not fit it. And I found that nobody really sold one of those. So what I had to do was, uh, you can get a set of tools very, that looks very similar to this called, that are basin wrenches for plumbers. And there was one that was close in size and I had to have it a little bit milled off of each of the six sides in order to get it to fit in because it was just a little bit oversized. So, now that it's time to get in here, I'm going to uh, take you over to the vise so I can clamp this up in the vise because as I recall last time I broke one of these special nuts open, it took quite a bit of force. So, we'll see you over at the vise. All right, we're over here at my uh, large bench vise. We got the shock mount tab clamped in the vise with a, a washcloth acting as some soft jaws so I don't mar it up too bad. Got my specialty tool. What drives the special nut on this end of things, it's a 17 millimeter. So I got my 17 mil on my impact. And let's give her what for. Oh, that was too easy. Entirely too easy. Uh, looks like we got some rust and such in there. Let's see all the uh, orange on the tool. Get the pinion gear out. And that is a six two oh one, maybe. It's hard to read when it's covered in rusty old brown grease. Yes, a six two oh one. And then the spacer. And we have another, I believe, 6201. This one is a press fit on the shaft. And then also, very important, there's a shim here. Do not lose this shim. If you lose this little shim, your pinion gear will not mesh with the ring gear properly. And you'll get binding and you'll probably destroy the, the ring and pinion in the rear end. So. Make sure this gets transferred over to the new bearing. All right, well, I gotta drag the press out. All right, we're over here at my uh, little press. And I took the spacer, and I'm gonna use that as part of the pressing collar. And then I have a 26 millimeter thick ball impact socket. That'll be my base to give me a little bit of extra room. Ah, she's easy. Moving already.
Make sure I'm not driving that into the socket wall or something I shouldn't be doing. Everything looks fine there, just a little bit more resistance. That's all she takes. Pinion gears in fine shape. Spacers in fine shape. Good to go. This is another 6201. All right, we're back at the press, getting ready to put the new bearing on. So what we have is I found a piece of stock that would fit pretty tight to the OD of the shaft because when we press this bearing on, you don't want to put any force on the outer race. You want to put any pressing force on the inner race, that way you're not damaging the races or the balls, and even then you really, the, be, the best way to do it would be to uh, freeze the shaft and, and then heat this up, and usually they'll just drop right together, but this has uh, the rubber seals, so I can't heat this up, and to be honest, the, the press fit wasn't that tight anyways, so I doubt I'll deform the inner race with the small amount of pressure that I'll be putting on it in order to get it to seat. So, uh, important that the the, uh, the bearing race here, it, this is the widest OD of the shaft, so make sure that you test fit it without the bearing on the shaft so that you know that your stock is wide enough to go over this shoulder because you don't want to get into the press and have this stock start to bear on this little lip right there. All right, I'm just using this as a little weighted base for it to sit into. Ooh. And I'll be right back. Contact, everything looks okay. Now I'm a little worried about everything going sideways because this uh, piece of stock I'm using is longer than it needs to be. But uh, she's going right home. I didn't shove it right hard against the pinion. I got it pretty tight, but it's not pressed right up against it hard. So upon reassembly, just gonna make sure that we've got ourselves enough room. and that the uh, pinion and ring gear are not too tight when they go together. All right, so now we got our spacer. And then our other bearing. And let's go back to the bench and uh, reassemble it. All right, back over here at the bench. 
We've got our various pieces. First thing I'm going to do is uh, apply a little grease to the pinion gear. And make sure to put the shim back into place. Use just a little dab to help kind of stick it there. You don't really want to grease this uh, outer bearing race. All right. We got the shim in place. Stack our washer or our spacer up. Our second bearing. Now we're ready to drop it in the differential. You got to kind of, well, you also want to make sure that uh, it's clean inside there, which I've already done. I know I, I don't have a light shining down in there, so you can actually see that it's clean, but she is. Oh, see, almost lost my spacer. Slider all the way down, make sure that it's meshing with the axle so that, or with the uh, ring gear so that the axle turns, you know you're there. Then it's time to reinstall your specialty nut. Now I know I had this in the vise when I took it out, but I'm going to put it back in with a few ugga duggas of the old impact and it'll be good and tight. And I won't need to put it in the vise in order to hold it. Got to go grab the impact. I'll be right back. All right. Oops. So she's tight. Make sure that it's not bound up. Everything spins freely. And we're ready to reinstall our rear differential. I guess it's not really a differential. Let me uh, reposition the camera, get ready to get it reinstalled. All right, we're getting ready to put the rear end back on the bike. I thought I'd give you a perspective from the other side this time. So when you put it on, you wanna make sure that the uh, square drive shaft mates properly with the drive shaft. Get your first screw in. And the drive shaft assembly is all dry, by the way, so the, the, everything is sealed. There's no uh, grease needed in here, and there's no oil seals, no lubrication. You know what? I suppose the only thing you might want to do, and I'm going to pop this back off and do so, is put a little dab on that square drive just because as the uh, rear end articulates up and down, this actually goes in and out, which is why it's got that spring on there. So. I'll just give a little squirt up in there and then do the same for there. You don't need a lot, just a little dab. Put her back.
All right, now that we got all three of those tight, we can put the uh, rear shock lower mount back into place. Now we're ready for the rear brake cable. Oh yeah, I shot that on the ground earlier. <laughs> Forgot to pick it up. Good thing I didn't kick it anyway. And of course the freight train comes through again. All right. Now we're ready for the, ooh. You know what I totally forgot earlier? When I closed up the ring gear on the other side of what you're looking at here, I forgot to put the bearing keeper back in. So I'm going to go back and do that in a second here. I just want to finish the brakes. All right, now we're ready to put the brake pads back on. I'm going to get myself a clean pair of gloves for this so I don't wipe any grease onto the pads. These pads are brand new. So the uh, spring goes through the back side of the pad. Set your uh, shoes up like so. You can get the uh, top one to seat right away. And if you kind of pull down and work it around just right, you can get the lower one to drop into place for you. And make sure you're in the groove and settled nicely just like you want to be. And now you're ready to put the tire back on. All right, now I gotta fix my mistake from earlier in the video. I suppose that's why you need <laughs> said keeper assembly in there. Back around the other side, we're ready to put our wheel back on. Got the spacer. Told you not to lose earlier. Put that into place. Put the wheel on. Maybe I have the brakes a little bit too tight. There she goes. All right. So there should be a washer on here. It appears to be missing. There's our nut. 
after you do this, you would have to put your uh, rear fender back on, which I didn't have on at the beginning of this video, and then you'd be good to go. All right, well, that's the end of our video on how to service the rear end of your Yamaha Hopper QT50. I hope you learned something and you're now willing to get in there and do it yourself. Uh, if you have any comments, feel free to leave them. If you got anything else you'd like me to do, feel free to uh, ask for that and I'll make a video performing that service. I hope you uh, like the channel and subscribe and come back and watch some more videos. Thanks for coming through.